same odds and one. Huh? This has happened a couple of times before. Take a mod, any mod, with an 18650 battery in it. But in the same retail box, have accessories in the box that allows the end user to basically remove half the mod, close off the base, and turn it into a single 18350 mod. This is the Ido, and I'm probably butchering the name, but there we go. This is the Ido from BP Mods, and you could probably just about see there is a seam running along here. This entire bottom half comes off. The whole bottom half comes off, and a new bottom plate goes on to convert this from an 18650 mod into an 18350 mod, both of them running the DNA 60 board and chip. Not only is it basically two mods in one, but it also looks high-end-ish. High-end-ish. This is a BP Mods liner, and the whole point of BP Mods was a more prestigious line of tanks and mods, but it does look very high-endy, the way that they've designed this. How well does this platform actually work, though? Not just as an 18650 mod, but as an 18350 mod. Only one way to find out. It's time for a mod review! So, quick look around the IDO. I'm sure I'm saying that right. The IDO mod by the folks over at BP Mods. Very Loch Ness-esque styling going on with this. Very Loch Ness-esque. So, starting at the top, we have got, of course, the 510 pin. Vic, it's the 510 pin spring mounted. Yes, it is. There's a heck of a tough spring underneath this, though. It takes a fair bit of pressure to get that 510 to actually move up and down, but it's definitely mounted. At the top here, if we give this a turn, hold on, there we go. We've got beauty rings now um, in the packaging. In, well, not so much in the packaging. I don't quite know how BP mods are doing this because normally what happens with reviewer sent packages is there's extras that are normally included in the box. But from what I know, there is various, <coughs> there is various different um, beauty rings that go on the top of this thing. And as you can see, the beauty rings are basically bayonet cap fitted with an O-ring at the cap to stop liquid from dribbling down into the well down here. But the beauty rings are removable uh, if you ever fancy changing what the top of the mod looks like. On this side, you've got nothing. On the front, you've got your screen and your USB-C charge port. And this is the interesting part, USB-C, but the mod uses a DNA 60. Yeah, which means that BP themselves either wired this thing up to run with a USB-C charge port or they got Evolve, the makers of the DNA60, to actually rig a bunch of DNA60 boards and chips to work with USB-C. But this is very unusual for a DNA60. Talking about DNA, there's your fire button and your up and down controls there. On the back, you've got nothing. Down at the bottom, you've got your battery tube. Now, not just that, you're probably seeing this split going all the way along here. There's a reason for that. Before we pop a battery in with its 18650 configuration, we're going to take the battery cap off and then we're going to grab this nurling and do this because this is convertible. Bottom of the tube out, bottom of the housing out, and guess who forgot to get the other bit for this? Hold on. I am an idiot. What I need to do is grab you and grab you. I think this is the one that you use. Da -da -da. Let's grab that. There we go. Because this is actually convertible into an 18350 mod. In the packaging, and this will be the same for retail, in the packaging you get this extra base plate, which then pops on like that. You've got two screws there, which means that included in the packaging you get this. Screw goes in there and a little Torx screwdriver. Pop that in, give this a screw down, just like that. Then we pop that in, give that a screw down, like that. Then your battery cap 
simply screws in to the threads that were originally being used for the bigger battery tube. And what you end up with is this little thing. Still a DNA 60, but running from an 18350 battery now. For a lot of people, and I'm talking about a lot of people, uh, probably about three quarters of the people watching this that are not interested in mouth to lung vaping, this is going to be useless for you. However, if you're using something like the Van de Vape Berserker 2 Mini, or you're using another one, like for instance, the, the, the BP Mods Pioneer, for that matter, same makers as this, the BP Mods Pioneer mouth to lung RTA, this tiny little thing running with an 18350, running at 14 to 15 watts, you've basically got the perfect mouth to lung stealth vape. I mean, look at the size of that. This is tiny. However, Good luck trying to find decent 18350 batteries because not a lot of battery manufacturers, or not manufacturers, but battery sellers, are actually selling 18350s these days. You might need to shop around and then to get it back to 18650, you pop out these two screws, like that. Oops, don't lose them, Vic. This bottom plate comes off. There we go. Then you get this with its with these things, because don't, don't forget, when, when you put this on, right, you're losing the USB-C connector. You're losing it. You're gonna have to charge your 18350 in a separate battery charger. But when you put the 18650 extender on, you've got all of these things, which is the, which is the contacts, which go onto this. Then it runs into the chip, and then it charges your, charges your battery. So this basically slides in like that. 18650 extension tube, that screws into the 18350 tube at the top. Done and dusted. That's you now in 18650 mode. We'll have a very, very quick look at what's going on here with the screen, but it's a DNA 60. We've seen these both we've seen these screens before. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wrong way round. BP mods, there's your classic, classic look for the old DNA 60s. You've got your battery indicator there. Ohms, volts, wattage. One, two, three. Does nothing, one, two, three, four, five. Locks it, one, two, three, four, five. Unlocks it. Now again, because this is a DNA 60 based board, we're going back to, we're going back to the much older Evolve ranges of boards and chips here. For all of the major configuration options for the DNA 60 based boards and chips, you will more than likely have to go through the eScribe software, but the DNA 60s, it's an old board. It's an old board with an even older chip. Any problems that the DNA 60s had, and there they were, they were a few problems, let's face it, folks. Any problems that the DNA 60s had on launch are more than fixed now. And what we've got in here, according to the box at least, that this comes in is the DNA 60 Evolved. Right, Evolve's the manufacturer, but this is called the DNA 60 Evolved board and chip, which means this is gonna have the latest firmware in it. All the niggling issues that the old DNA 60 had, this is not gonna have it because Evolve has already updated the firmware before they shipped it out to the folks over at BP Mods. So, very tried and trusted board and chip sitting inside this thing, and it's gonna kinda have to be, considering that this can be downgraded to an 18350 based battery. If you're using an 18350 battery in a regulated mod, you're gonna have to make sure that the battery management that's on the board and chip is not gonna overtax that 18350, which is probably why BP decided to go with a DNA 60 in this. Because the 60 was released at a time, the original run of the 60, the 60 was released at a time when 18350 mods were very popular. Very popular. They're not so popular now, but I've got a sneaky suspicion they might be coming back. But anyway, that was the up close and personal of the Ian. You know what? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right. Here's what I'm gonna do. I think it's called Ido, but I'm not sure. That's the name there, uh, Ido? Anyway, that's the Ido mod from the folks over at BP. Let's head back up to the main cam and see what this fella performs like.
If you're liking the content on this channel, not just the reviews, but the news stuff and of course the live shows and of course the What's Up Sunday update vlog and all the eSig 101 videos, and you want to consider supporting Vaping with Vic financially, if you head to vapingwithvic.co.uk forward slash support, you will find multiple ways via either via Patreon, the YouTube membership subscription system, or other ways to actually support Vaping with Vic financially. This is a full-time job for me, folks, and what I'm sitting in right now is a studio that I'm renting out in an office building in the town that I'm living in. For more information on where your money's actually gonna go, because you've, you, you, you'll have you want to know where your money's gonna go, let's be honest, folks, if you do decide to join Patreon, for instance, again, head on to vapingwithvic.co.uk forward slash support and have a look at the video at the top. Back on to the review. And we're back up top with the BP mods. I don't, I am probably butchering this name. I, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Ido, but I'm not sure, right? Back up top with the Ido mod. Now look at that for a clean setup. This is the Yacht Vape and Mike Vapes Eclipse single coil RT sitting on top of this. Look at that. That is a really nice looking little setup. So I've got this pegged at 60 watts with a fresh 18650 sitting in here and we're off. Oh, Black Vine, Rochford Project. If you haven't bought some, go and buy some now. That is so good. And there we go, folks. That was the up close and the personal of the BP Mods Idol Mod. Now, down at the table cam, I think I, I think I mentioned it, but I forgot to show it. There is two 510 plates that come with this. This is the flat 510 plate. And as you can see, there is no recess going on in here. It's a flat plate. However, these are bayonet fitted, just a quarter ton, and the whole plate comes off. Now, You've got this, and this 510 plate is O-ringed and it's recessed. So not only will it not take this tank, because this tank's actually too wide, this particular, this particular 510 plate has got an O-ring to seal off the edges, which means, number one, it's made for smaller drippers to fit inside the cup. And number two, it's, prote it's protecting the 510 plate and the 510 pin underneath it from over dripping. And this little 510 plate with the recessed cup is also very handy for smaller mouth to lung setups because it acts as a beauty ring to curve up to the edge of the tank. Nice, nice what's the word I'm looking for? Nice accessories. Just the option is there. It's there if you want a recessed 510 plate to go with your much thinner and smaller diameter tanks or thinner and smaller diameter drippers. If you don't care, just use the flat plate. That's what I'm using. I'm just using the flat plate. It makes things a lot easier. So what do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. There's nothing much we can say about the board and chip. It's using what I consider a classic DNA board a very classic DNA board. Any problems that any problems that surfaced with the original releases of the DNA 60, all the way back in 20, when did the DNA 60 come out? End of 2015? It was when the wattage race kicked off, the original wattage race, between Pioneer for You with the IPV1 and 2, uh, because Pioneer for You came out with the IPV1, which went up to 30 watts which was 10 watts more than DNA 20. Then Pioneer For You, two months later, came out with the original IPV2, the, the Mark I version of the two, that had the touch sensor at the top that never fucking worked. And I think it was something like three months after that, this board came out, the DNA 60 from Evolve, and it was Evolve and IPV slash Pioneer For You, that kicked off that original wattage race because no one else was doing it. The original war was between Pioneer For You and Evolve. Eventually, Pioneer For You won with the release of the IPV... 
It wasn't the two mini, it was the IPv3 from what I remember at the uh, beginning of summer 2016. This is going way back. Beginning of summer 2016, I think the IPv3 original run went up to something like 110 watts. And that was it. Evolve gave up after that. It took a while for Evolve to bring out the C line of boards and chips and bump the main line up to 200 and the C line up to 250. By that point in time, Smock had waded in with their dual battery 18650s at 220 or 230 watts. And the war was already over by that point in time. But this board is an old board. There's no getting around it. But with older boards and older, older chips comes a much more mature algorithm to run with that board and chip. The DNA60 is an old board, there's no getting around it, but you will find very little, if any, problem with the way the board, the screen, and everything works with this particular mod. That's probably why BP decided to go with this particular board. And the second reason, cost. A DNA60 is far cheaper to buy on wholesale than a DNA75C. Far cheaper than a DNA75C. That's probably why they went with this. Number one, much more smaller screen size so they could keep the mods small. And number two, less cost in wholesale. And there's nothing wrong with the 60. Nothing wrong at all with the DNA60 these days. Mm. However, where this particular mod comes into its own is the fact that this bottom part comes off completely comes off. Then you get the spare bottom section that comes in the package, pop it on, pop the, pop the two screws in, pop in an 18350, tiny little battery, and what you've essentially got with a nice tiny stealth mouth-to-lung tank sitting on top is a mouth-to-lung setup that will easily fit inside a top shut pocket and weigh a lot less than most of the starter kit, mouth-to-lung kits that you get in vape shops these days. This is one of those mods that are, go this, this is one of those mods that's going to stay on a vapor shelf. Whether that vapor be a mouth-to-lung vapor or whether that vapor be a single coil tank RTA vapor, it's gonna stay on that vapor shelf because generally, this is an overgeneralization, but it's kind of true. You generally tend to find that Single coil RTA users like myself, I, I thoroughly enjoy single coil RTAs more so than I enjoy dual coil RTAs. I'm not really much of a fan of dual coil RTAs unless there's something special about the tank. I personally prefer to use the smaller single coil RTAs. And what you generally tend to find is people that go for single coil direct to lung RTAs also happen to be mouth to lung fans. And this is one of those mods. You can take the bottom of this thing off, pop the new bottom on, 18350 inside, bump the wattage down to 15 watts, and put something like the BP Mods Pioneer mouth to lung tank on top, or uh, that new one from Aspire, or a whole host of other mouth to lung tanks that are out on the market. And with a single 18350 with the DNA 60 board in here, running it round about 10 to 15 watts with a one ohm or above coil, that setup is gonna last you the better part of half a day. Half a day, because you're not straining an 18350 battery by running the thing at 10 to 15 watts with a one ohm or higher coil sitting inside your RTA. It will last you at least half a day. And if you're fed up with that, take the bottom off, put the extended bottom on, screw the battery tube back in, single 18650, 60 watts, good enough, for a lot of the mid-range stock coil tanks and more than good enough for these little single coil RTAs. Um, BP Mods have nailed it with this thing. Granted, it looks a little bit Loch Nessy, not the actual lake, but there's a mod company uh, called, the, I, think the, I think the actual company's called Loch Ness, but they came out with a line of mods that are based off the name of Loch Ness and this is, 
similar in design to one of the much, much more older Loch Ness mods that came out round about the back end of 2017 going into 2018. And I think from what I remember, that mod also ran off a DNA 60 board. Or was it a DNA 75C? No, I think it ran off a DNA 60. So a lot of people out there probably don't know the Loch Ness mods because they're, they're a niche within a niche when it comes to the high end, but when I spotted this, I thought, that, that looks like a Loch Ness mod. Very similar, that kind of sloping front going on. Very clean, curved look in the front, but I've got to hand it to BP. It's not an exact clone. It's not as if they cloned the Loch Ness mod, but they must have got some design aspects from what Loch Ness were doing with those older line of very curvy mods that they came out with in 2017 and 2018. This is a good mod, folks, especially if you're a mouth-to-lung vapor. Especially if you're mouth-to-lung. If you aim your coil at 1 ohm, 1.2, 1.4 ohms, and you're going for the shorter-run tanks, like the Digiflavor Siren V4 that I looked at not that long ago, or the, the Van de Vape Berserker V2 Mini. Put this into 18350, pop your tank on top, you've got the perfect stealth vape. Perfect! stealth vape and it's been a long time since i've said that for a mouth to lung fan perfect stealth vape decent 18350 bought off a reputable supplier running it at anywhere between 10 to 15 watts you can go half a day half a day at least before that 18350 starts to give up on you and when you're sick of that extension tube back on 18650 single coil restrictive direct to lung RTA, crank this all the way up to 60 watts and you get this. You really can't complain at that, you really can't. You're essentially getting two mods for the price of one. That's basically what you're getting. And there we go folks, that was the BP Mods IDO. I'm probably getting the name completely wrong, but that was the BP Mods Idol. Big thanks to the folks at BP Mods for sending it over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do down below. That was good, give it a thumbs up. Very fast at the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. And if that's latest What's Up Sunday update, log in the middle, shout out to the hashtag Flu Farm with the Patreon subscribe stars and the YouTube members for keeping Vape with Vic supported financially. And underneath me is the Vape Mac logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.